I grew up in the Niger Delta region and recently in January of 2016 decided to go back tracing my roots, particularly tracing how myself and my dad and siblings traveled in Niger Delta region in search of his station. And what is his station? It's where my father taught for several years. So we would uh, pack some medicine, food in a canoe, accompanied with uh, a few tools for hunting, fishing, and of course, paddling. And we would travel for a whole day, sometimes more than a day, in search of my dad's place of work. I show you that Cut right. As you can see, our first attempt at entering the creek didn't quite work well. We rented out a boat, an outboard engine boat that didn't travel far before uh, it stopped. We're now in a book of the area of Ondo State is uh, the beginning of the Niger Delta region where we're exploring what's happening uh, after this many years of militancy in the Niger Delta region, oil exploration, community conflict and uh, all that that we intend to bring to you. This is like uh, pretty late, it's like 7.30 p.m. in Ibokoda. I was just trying to take a ride into the creeks and it's very late, you know, our boat is, as you can see, uh, really challenging and we're tired, man. Very yes, tired. Well, we just have to do something before we, we gotta do. So we have to, we yes. have to just like start going and uh, we're taking a the boat school into like the creeks, yeah. I, I love this, it's nice on my skin, man. And it's total darkness too. And yeah, because it's no, no electricity, you know, no, no electricity in this part of the world. Yeah, and, and I hope I right i can see the way you know so yeah it's very nice i don't want to go back yeah that's your problem can we just keep going please <laughs> just keep going <laughs> <laughs> So the next day, we tried another route. This time around, surprisingly, there's been some road construction into Elijah land. And so we drove as far as Ugbonla, one of the key townships in Elijah land. And there, we met up with some young people who also double as peacemakers in the area and got on some very, very powerful engine boats. I must tell you, I've seen engine boats before, but these ones are pretty different. It is their own Rolls Royce in a larger line. So this is Ugbo community, the main base of the Laje people. So we just had a meeting with some of the community youths. We're going to go into the creeks right now with the support of some of the young people here who may tend peace in this very volatile part of uh, the Niger Delta region. But there's also some kind of ritual going on in this, uh, in this village, I mean this township today because somebody apparently just died and they're supposed to so we'll be heading out in a moment from now with our life jackets. Some of us can swim, so we won't need life jackets. And we're going to go into the real creeks of the Niger Delta region, okay? 
so that's that's what we're about right now. So we're waiting for some of the guys who are following us on this trip, and we're gonna get on a boat with two engines, very powerful engines, and we start heading out, looking for the unknown. All right. And so we traveled, and traveling in the creeks, as you can see, got me reunited with the things that I've been used to. Women fetching water from uh, the creeks, you know, the market people from whom we bought bugs, and we ate a lot of. Uh, seeing how abject poverty afflicts one of Nigeria's source of huge revenue from oil. And to see that much hasn't changed in the area. In fact, it's gotten worse. But it's also amazing to see that regardless of all of this, people kept moving on, moved on with their lives. And there's some social, cultural, and economic activity in a larger land that you can see from my going back today. Sure, I'm only really about to try one of these. Um, I mean, you guys are gonna feel bad about me, yeah. but you know, listen. I don't know about this one. So right now, this is like a marketplace. You know, you can see a lot of boats selling different kind of stuff. I don't know. It's lovely. And by the way, I'm still enjoying my boat. Man. So this is called the Creek, right? Yeah. Niger Delta area. You know, those if you eat this shit and you survive, you can survive anything. What can you tell us about these people in those little boats? Yeah, these are little canoes you know, of subsistence farmers, um, women who are like fishing. And these people are probably here fishing water. Is that water for drink? Yeah. Wow. Because well, they don't have water. This, um, all of their water is polluted, but they got to drink what they can find. So. That's the toilet. So everything goes into this water. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the same thing they drink. The yeah. same water they drink. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Sadly. One of the places I found myself going to was Ayetoro. Ayetoro is one of the world's oldest religious commune. It was created in 1947 named exactly, I think, after the United Nations, which was created in 1945, or which was founded in 1945. But Ayetoro, which used to have its own school, its own supply of electricity, water, is a shadow of its former self. Today, it's been under constant bombardment from sea erosion and the town is almost lost to erosion. But it also presents the story of Nigeria in a way because here is an attempt by the Nigerian government to save Ayetoro. A contract is awarded to a contractor and the contractor puts in a few sandbags and disappears. You can tell from the story of Ayetoro today. Uh, 
Now as we are going, now we are going to the sea. So the sea has, yeah. so the sea is going to be spoiled. Yeah, sea spoiled everything. Yeah. Yeah. House, everything, instruments. Some people, not even our church. Everything has affected. Stay, yeah. Of course, as it is with the Nigerian government, yes, there's a contract to save Ayatoro. But is the contract being implemented? Of course, your guess is as good as mine. No. This is what the contractor did. You know, some few activity, uh, and then after six billion naira ahead, he disappears. We can deliver it as fruit. It is fruit. Inside the village, inside the community, when it is the time now, you just kill, you go just wash your uh, gin, all the water. Even in the community, not only here in the community, that is how we are doing it. Exploded. Yeah. Uh, the fishermen just came back from uh, fishing, so we're going to talk to one of them to see what is going on here. So, please, can you tell us um, exactly what's going on here? Can you tell me? Especially, tell me how far you have to go. You know, you have to do me. You have to do me to buy me. The delay, I've been thinking the delay. You know, if you like to tell me, oh, God, you have to go now. Oh, God, you have to go now. Orayetoro was not the only place I visited. We traveled in a highly powered boat to several places, including reaching the end of the creeks in Elaje, where the creek met the Atlantic Ocean. And even so, not far from us, an oil platform uh, that was heavily guarded by the Nigerian military. This is like the end of the river and this is the beginning of the Atlantic Ocean and we're here. And if you look directly, you can take a look, cameraman, there's an oil platform right there. We can't get there today because we don't have a boat that's capable of traveling that far. Uh, and probably they will let us get near them anyway because like there's a lot of Navy activity and military activity because guys are afraid. But this is, this is the Atlantic Ocean, so if there's anybody who wants to go to the U.S. from here, you can start moving. wanted to see also a community near Elijah and Ijo community and it was a stark difference as you can see at this attempt to meet one of the militant leaders Bibo in the area who wasn't too happy uh, to see me and declined granting me an interview.
we saw waterway, uh, police checkpoints, army checkpoints actually. In one instance, they actually wanted us to offer bribes and uh, we wouldn't budge. And you can see some of this happening here. If I fear for the Bola Ego, the more a boy, I have to not go to me for years. What is the force now? We see a one who call the Hot Letter. On our way back, of course, we saw devastation, no doubt. We saw neglect, there's no doubt. But it was great just to be reunited with a place where I grew up, you know, a place where I cut my teeth in primary school. In fact, one of the things I used to do in this area was swim behind my dad's canoe to school. That I couldn't do today because somehow we couldn't get to my old primary school in the area. But I hope to go back again uh, after this trip, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, it's great to be reunited with my place in a larger land. The soup is called Aburubo. Baba Midwi, il a dit la tito. Qui m'a fait très la disposition et paye. Il a dit la tito. 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 Il a dit la I love you, I love you, Jadi. Ubole Mujadi, Mahile Mujadi, Ahile Mujadi, Eskale Mujadi. I love you, I love you, I love you. Yeah, they talk back to me, I will say, Miro, I get our ma, of my work too. May I have a position at this for Oskwe Mokawe, Oskwe Mgaba Mokawe, more than I degree, no English. I was a mirror. I was a mirror. I was a mirror. I was a mirror. I was a 
mo ba mi la tojo la on ma wa ngan yi kawe mo fe jan ka kawe mo mo bi an ba me gbon lo ibo oluba ngan ta ba gbon lo ibo bi an ba wa pe an fe ma be tu gba de ya no oluba ngan yi o de so didunu baba mo bi na eh so we spent the whole day in Niger Delta exploring, hoping to find a lot, and we did see a lot and we're hoping that one day we'll be able to go back and actually look at the life of the larger people again, the people who should be swimming in the world, who are living in complete abject poverty with the government not actually felt here, or the presence of government not felt here. And, but the people are going ahead with their lives. Look at this big fish we bought from fishermen and look at me doing what I used to do, riding the outboard engine of a very, very small engine boat. This is how life used to be in the Niger Delta region where I was born. I've not seen their step as big as this before. So, so how much is this one? Eight thousand naira. Eight thousand naira. And this equivalent to like twenty dollars. Wow. Rest sniper. Yeah, that's our cameraman right there. Our cameraman was a little bit scared. But now, now, don't go on now, people. I did not know that. Yes, one thousand. One thousand. One thousand. One thousand. Yeah. No, no worries. I didn't see him before now. Not fish and butter. Yeah, my dad. Not fish and butter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me exactly what you're doing here? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused right now. I've never seen you in this kind of action. You know, I used to be uh, on a boat like this with my dad when I was uh, when my dad was a teacher in Elaje. So we have a small 25 uh, boat. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just living my life once again. And it's pretty cool to come back to Elaje area, the Niger Delta area. Yeah, I can see this is really fun. Uh, I'm enjoying myself too. You know, you know, we've been talking about this for years now, yeah, and it's like a dream come true to me. Yeah. You know, to me, for me personally, it's like a dream come true. So and I'm happy that you're enjoying yourself too. I, I wish I could fish today. You know, like just go out there and fish you know, and uh, have a lot of fun. That fish part, we're gonna keep that for another day, yeah, next time. so I can see you do that. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do. It. Yeah. Give me a little. Okay.